In this video, I want to talk about a, um, a project that I built called Simple Shop. Um, so I used technologies like Angular TypeScript and C-Sharp ASP.NET Core to build this application. So basically what's going to happen is that in this video, I wanted to spend some time, give you a demo about what this application can do. And then I want to, I want to talk about the database or database schema or database relationship looks like for this application, as well as the design pattern that I use for building this application. And lastly, I also want to conclude um, what are some areas that I could further improve. Now, before I give you a preview of what this application is about, let me tell you that this application, I built it a couple of years ago. And the purpose of this application is to build a simple e-commerce store and the user can be able to browse the product, add it to the cart, and also complete the order. Now I haven't integrated this with any other payment API like PayPal or Stripe, but that could be a potential um, direction in the future. So here you can see, um, currently I'm not logged in yet, but you, you can see that this application is using uh, SSL, right? And uh, inside of the uh, repo or the code repository, I have a step-by-step -step guide on how to install that for this application. And so here you can see, these are the list of products, right? You can see here on the top, we are showing how many items that we display per page, in this case, one to six, and there are a total of 18 products that we have. And uh, here you can see I have paging as well. I can navigate to a different page, page two, page three. If I go to page three, the last page, you can see the next button is grayed out. If I'm on the first page, then the previous button will be grayed out. And uh, I can also search for a product. For example, if I'm on the, on the second page, if I search for a product, for example, Redis, and this will basically navigate back to the first page, as you can see. And since we're on the first page, now the button is already grayed out where it's gone because we only have on the first page. We can reset and everything back to normal. We can also sort by alphabetical order. We can also sort by price low to high. We can also search or sort it by price high to low. Uh, we can also add a different filters here. You can see we can also add particular brand. I want to sort it by high to low for a particular brand, particular type, right? And uh, you can see we have that option. Um, we can also reset and go back to normal. And uh, if I want to add a particular item to the cart, you can see that it says that we're not authorized. So let's try to log in first. And uh, okay, so let's try to log in first. And uh, before I log in, I just want to show you that inside of our code base, we have a class called store context seed. And here is where I seeding data from this folder, which contains a list of JSON files. And I also have a create a one user here, uh, which in this case, you can see the email is this one right here. And the password is created by user manager. So in this case, the email is this one and the password is going to be the one that I mentioned in the user, uh, in, in the, in the stored context seed, which is this one right here. So I added a card, add item onto the card, and I can also change the quantity as well. If I go in here, I, I can also change it to, for example, five, and this will update our cart to five. And you can see the total also changes as well. Uh, if I go back here, I can also decrease it and this will change it as well. Uh, if I go back to, in this case, the, uh, the, the homepage, I can also add a couple more items, right? So you can see, I can also add a couple more items. Uh, go back to here, change it. So you can see the total also changes as well. I can also de uh, delete a item, right? You can see I can also delete items um, inside of our carts. And uh, here you can see the shipping address is already added because of here. Um, and I also added Canada for the country. So what I can do is I can click on buy now and this will buy or complete the order or basically uh, delete everything that we have in the carts and then form it as an order. So if I check all the orders that I have, you can see I have two so far, right? And then the prices are listed, total are listed, also the status, order ID, order dates, shipping address, and so on. Uh, of course, I can also change the address as well. So if I want to change it to Lanley, right, I can also do that as well. Um, but I have to, uh, in this case, I have to buy something before, before to changing it. So for example, Lanley, right, and I buy it now, you can see the the, uh, uh, the city is changed or the address is changed, right? 
Now, of course, I can also sign out and I can also sign up as well. So I can just create a, a new user, for example, uh, Adam. Now, this application we haven't integrated, or I should say I haven't integrated with any payment uh, integration or payment API, for example, Stripe or PayPal. But that could be a direction that I could uh, you know, explore in the future. So if I sign up, you can see we're in a new user, right? And uh, so far you can see the orders are empty and the carts. So let's go to the carts. You can see we don't have any items in the cart, I guess. So if I add an item, let's go to carts. You can see we have an item here. So now also I want to show you the API layout as well. So here you can see this is the layout for the API and uh, we have accounts, right? And that we also have baskets, orders, products, right? And these are the schemas for the input and output. So in terms of database relationship schema, right? This is what it looks like. So I didn't have the fields or properties filled out, but basically you can see that user can have many orders, right? Can be able to create many orders and each order can have many items. And each user can also add many items to the, to the carts, right? Um, and uh, you can see here for products, each product can only have a product, one prototype and uh, each product can only have one product brand. So it's one-to-one -one relationship between product and product type and product and product brand. So in terms of the pattern that I use to design our application, I use repository pattern and the goal is I want to reduce duplicate logic. And uh, basically you can see here on the right, uh, we have a code, right? We're trying to communicate to our context. We're trying to write our query, right? We're using ORM to write our query and uh, try to get our top selling courses. But instead of doing that, instead of our API layer, right? What we can do instead is we can use repository pattern. In this case, we can leave that responsibility to a repository so that repository can be able to query the data and in the API or in the uh, controller, right? In this case, we are only trying to retrieve the data and uh, this will be able to make our, our code to reduce our duplicate logic, right? De decouple application from the persistence layer and also try to make our code be more testable so that we can be able to test, you know, this repository pattern uh, more easily, right? To be able to mock these dependencies and so on. Um, and you can see that for repositories pattern, right? We usually have like an add object, remove object, get, get all, uh, find something, right? So, so on and so forth, right? Um, so this is the pattern that I use to build this application. So lastly, I wanna talk about what are some areas to further improve? Well, one thing that I would like to improve is to add some automate, automate testings. As you can see here inside of our application, I haven't added any automate testing. Everything was done in manual. So I would definitely try to test each and every single layer, right? The, on the front end as well as the back end. And the back end, uh, we will definitely try to test each repository class. Um, and then we will try to mock those dependencies and try to test it, right? So those are some things that, you know, I, I, I would say to good things to improve and also try to add more detailed commit message. I think that's very, very important, especially when you want to work, you know, work on this project for a long time, right? You, I wrote it, but some, some commit message, for example, update the code, it doesn't really make any sense, right? If I want to, in the future, if I want to revert the changes, right? If I want to, you know, be able to see, okay, which commit did what exactly, then in this case, I need to have a clean or a proper commit message. Another thing that I will say is making names to be more consistent because some names that are very, very vague and some names that are uh, very detailed. So if I could make them consistent, I think it will be really beneficial for anyone to read the code. Um, and the other thing is to spend more time on refactoring. I think refactoring is very, very important. Um, some code I feel like I could further refactor and make it more reusable. Um, so those are the things that I could think of. And of course, I think there are probably a lot more areas that I could further improve. Uh, just keep in mind that I built this application two years ago. So um, yeah, so I, I, those are the things that you know I could think of, but that's about it. And, um, and of course the, the, the code is in the description for this video. Um, and uh, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.